I am so lucky that I belong to a peer-to-peer -peer group and several of them that I found when I was out there by myself and alone with this diagnosis of Alzheimer's. Unfortunately, you know, I didn't know where to turn to. Somehow I found my way to the Alzheimer's Association and to you, Maria, and with this amazing group that was the peer-to-peer -peer group. And I just, I can't thank you enough and everybody else and peer-to-peer -peer group has kept me alive and kept me going. And if it wasn't peer-to-peer, -peer, I don't know where I would be today. Oh, Laurie, I'm just so honored to have been able to be there for you and um, to be able to be in a position to facilitate these peer-to-peer -peer support groups. I mean, they were a lifesaver to me back in 2016 when, when I was first diagnosed. Um, they were part of my life. And um, just to know that you were out there for that length of time, not having any support was just heartbreaking. So it's been a big part of why I'm determined to keep this going. And um, it's something I'm really proud of being part of establishing. I mean, I've always been part of virtual support groups. Um, and as I said, since 2016, but um, 2019, the Greenville office, my local Alzheimer's Greenville office was able to offer um, an in-person group, which was peer led by me. And um, it was the first of its kind for persons diagnosed um, in the whole of the Alzheimer's Association. So um, that was awesome. And we called ourselves the Lunch Bunch. Um, but unfortunately in March last year, we had to stop the in-person groups and um, transition to virtual. That was an easy transition for me. Maybe not so much for everybody else in the group, but um, I was able to help um, start this and, um, my biggest joy is being able to introduce people and get people connected. Um, as I always say, I'm not um, in, in, I'm not the person who likes to be in front of the camera. I'm more of a backstage director. So I like to set up the connections and just watch and see people grow and just see the lives come back. And to see the change in Lori in a year has just been amazing. And I'm just, you know, just honored to be part of this group. And we're really going from strength to strength. I mean, um, the virtual format brings people together in such a unique way. Um, and it doesn't matter where they live. Um, we have people who join our humble little lunch bunch group that started in Greenville, South Carolina. Um, they actually join us now from all across the United States, all over mm -hmm. the world. We've had people from the UK, Canada, um, even Australia. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can't even say Massachusetts. And so it's just, it's just a huge honor. And um, yeah. And it, it's Thank really you. great is there's, with the Alzheimer's programs, we also have the educational groups that people can log into. And I mean, they're learning so many things like I've gotten out with the financial and the legal aspects, learning how to uh, drop your uh, yeah. wills, your estate planning, help with uh, elder care, nutritional Absolutely. programs, memory care. There is so Every many different options. You know, we have a program offered each week and each one is like so unique and it's focused um, Basically, um, the pro, you know, there is a program each week, but the focus on the presentation by a person living with early stage dementia, the living well beyond my diagnosis, that one um, encompasses everybody. I mean, everybody is open to join that one. And um, I mean, the peer, the peer led ones are absolutely amazing, but also the other programs, as Laurie said, are just make it all come together. Um, some of the programs are educational, um, some are informal, some are formal, some are focused on more um, support and social engagement. 
Um, and we're always continually been evaluating. Every week we get together with Jamie Gay, the program director for the Green for Alzheimer's Association, and we're for continually trying to be relevant and evaluating that we are meeting everybody, everybody's needs, not just the person diagnosed or the care partner or just somebody who has an interest in brain health or Alzheimer's, we really want to be relevant to everybody and also transparent to be able to reduce the stigma because, you know, there's such a feeling of kindred spirits with people living with dementia. You know, we have a universal sense of belonging that when we get into a group that is just us, that is unique. And mm -hmm. I never want that to change because we need that support, we need that place. But we also need to be able to share what we have with each other, um, with others, you know? So that's why the Living Well Beyond My Diagnosis is really one of my favorite programs that we started. And that is, it, it, it's a great program. And we've been so fortunate because we've had people talking from everywhere. We've had last month, one of our fellow people on ESAG She's out in California and she was able to talk with everybody, give her experiences. The whole, it was wonderful. We've had yeah. uh, Mike who's up in yeah. New England. And he's, he's also from, from ESAG. And we had Julie Hayden who is yeah. from the UK and yeah. she, her and I have been in support groups for a long time. And, you know, she brought the element of living alone, um, mm -hmm you know, as well. So she runs her own groups. And I love how we're all starting to be able to work together. It's not just one organization. I feel that we're bringing organizations together. And that's the only way we're going to beat this disease is for right. all of us. It, together. It, it's great because it gives us all, it lets everybody see that there is life after diagnosis and that we're, we're yes. all thriving. Yes. It's not when they sit there and tell you, okay, here's your diagnosis go home, make your final decisions, and you're done. Well, no, yeah. we are living, breathing proof that there is so much more out there. And with the peer-to-peer -peer groups and with all of these amazing programs, we've, we've met so many people, Maria. It's just, it's wonderful. And they- oh, You've met so many people. people. <laughs> yeah. I I, I kind of knew a lot of the people because, as I said, I've been doing this for five years. And, you know, and so a lot of these people have all been in my life for a long time. And seeing new, you know, somebody like you who really didn't know anybody and mm -hmm. had not really met anybody else diagnosed. And then suddenly you've met, I don't know, hundreds of people now. Mm -hmm that you are now friends with, that are friends of mine, they're our friends, you know, and seeing you have those connections and other people who have come in, it's just, I just, it's just really humbling. And it just is, it's, it's, it's my heart, mm -hmm. you know, that is my heart, connecting people and um, providing that safe place that we can stay connected um, and knowing yeah, that yeah. we're not alone and yeah. that we we can share our story without judgment. I mean, it's an incredible feeling just to know that you can just show up to the peer be to peer groups and just just be you and people are gonna get it. Nobody's gonna be judging you. And you no know? topic is off limits. We experienced that yesterday. We had a very yeah. emotional peer yes. peer group. We've had people obviously with COVID that have passed away, depression, suicide, it, you yeah. name it. And we we are there to support each other and it does not matter. No, we do not judge each other. We help each other. We support each other. We build each other up. We hug each other when we need to, even virtually. We know how to do it. Yeah. And it, it, it it's an amazing, wonderful, wonderful establishment. It is. It is. Yeah. It is. And the yeah. virtual format, I think, has been a benefit for all of us especially me, like I'm up in Clover. Yeah. Far away from Greenville. Greenville, you guys have such a wonderful group. And me being so far away on the other side of the state, I wouldn't have had that. I'd be here off in a little dinghy by myself in the middle of the ocean. Aww. Yet you guys, you have that 
connection. So now, even though COVID was a bad thing, it's been a wonderful thing for me and so many others that now we're connecting with, like in Tennessee and you name it. So then also what I wanted to ask you, what do you think, you know, how easy it is? How can we push it to let other people know about how easy it is to do this, to connect? Because people, I think, are afraid of that virtual because you are the virtual yeah. guru. You know how to do it. <laughs> No, I'm not. But I think it's just making that first step. I mean, making that first step. And I always, you know, maybe even a phone call to connect with somebody. I always, you know, I know I get a hard time for spending a lot of time supporting people on the phone and um, stuff before and after groups. But that kind of is part of being a facilitator and why I went through the training. And, you know, I have done a lot of um you know, the reason I was able to be the facilitator and host the in-person group was because of my training that I have done. And so I think getting to make people feel just comfortable and that phone call, just that phone call, just, just to say, Hey, you know, it's okay. You know, and I'll, I, I will help you set up zoom. I mean, we don't even have to have zoom. I mean, we have one lady that connects who just connects by her phone and she still feels connected to us, you know, and she just connects, she dials in and, you know, um, we stay connected as a group texting and um, calling each other. We become family. Um, I think just to tell people, don't be shy. You know, we just reach out to us. We'll message you. We'll, you know, we'll help you get connected and, the main thing is everything in this group is confidential. You know, um, what, what happens in this group stays in this group. Um, so, yeah. It, it's so easy. I mean, all time is, what is it? All time is dot org slash South Carolina. You can find us. We're out there. We're here <laughs> for you. I have learned. Well, Okay. Yes, there can be mistakes in the Zoom. We're all afraid of that. Perfect example, yesterday we were doing a Zoom meeting. I was made the facilitator or leader. Okay, I am a technical <laughs> non-person. All of a sudden it ran over a little. I had to leave. I said, bye guys. I had to go <laughs> I had for everybody. So don't be afraid to make a mistake. I know people get afraid of the computer, like, oh, no, I can't do it. I'm going to do something wrong. That's okay. We have Alzheimer's. We'll laugh about it. We'll <laughs> we do. About it. And we did. People will make a mistake when you're on the computer, whatever. It's okay. We'll help you. It's okay. Yeah. And don't think we come on there being perfect or looking perfect. I mean, there's many times where it's just pajamas and a hoodie. You know, and we don't even want to, sometimes days we don't even want to turn our cameras on, but just showing up and knowing you're part of a group of unique individuals who really understand what you're going through. And we're here. I mean, it's life changing. There's no way I could have survived the last five years of my diagnosis without it. And, um, and same with me. I mean, think I was diagnosed at 52. I'm 55 now. And I did not find this group until last year so for two years I was out there by myself trying to figure out okay um how long do I have am I going to die today when am I going to lose everything and just the thought of no. there's nobody else there out there that are as young as I <laughs> that whenever I saw everybody I'm, I mean I'm picturing all times you have that old person sitting on the porch that are drooling on themselves because I was ignorant to the fact of what all times actually was. Yeah. Then luckily I have educated myself. I've met you. I've met so many people and I've been supported by so many people, with this association. It's amazing. And the love that you get is just, it's a big hug. <laughs> I can't say enough. So here's another thing too. So um, let's think. Peer to peer program is specifically for those with Alzheimer's, other dementias, and mild cognitive impairment. 
Participants should be aware that their diagnosis and willing to discuss how they impacted, how it impacted them. So yeah, that's true. We discuss everything. And I mean everything sometimes. But that's okay. And you know, you're free to participate as much as you want, or you can just sit and listen, you know. Um it's it's just got it's just you so unique and really it's hard to describe and just you just need to join us if you have a diagnosis you know i just really don't want anybody else to be out there feeling oh. that they're the only one and so whatever it takes phone call join us whatever you know just get connected is so important and if it you is, need your care partner too like we have some yeah. people that their care partner comes on with us and logs on with them and helps them along the way. And, and it's easy. And we're actually, there's some of the programs that we do that we're all together. It's not just us. It's yeah. also the care partner and it's great. And there's painting things. You and others have done painting, which are amazing painting <laughs> classes that we've done. We do museums. We've gone, um, done virtual tours of museums. We've had musical concerts, we've had, yeah, I know. So it is important and, you know, it's going to be so good when we can start in person again. And I really hope that, you know, other Alzheimer's chapters across the United States will start their own in-person groups, but also continue to have the virtual support for those who cannot get to an office. And um, I think that's so important. Or even get it going more. I mean, I, even after we go in person, I'd still think virtual. There's going to be some oh, virtual too. That's going because to be people yeah. out there in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. You know, and Absolutely. we're giving hugs to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but the most important is like Lori is a big, you know, advocate of saying we're living our best lives, and you know. And it's not always smiles. I mean, there was a lot of tears, you know, just say yesterday's group. We had, a, you know, a lot, you know, but at the end of the group, we were all there for each other. And that in itself is a sense of joy. Yeah. We can yeah. cry and then at the next minute, we're all laughing. Yeah. It, yeah. It's amazing. And we can tell each other things that we can't tell our families or our friends and, no. and other people because they don't understand. And we know yeah. that. And it's, it's, it's a very unique perspective on everything that I, I, I just can't say enough about. It really saved my life, you know? So if you're living with early stage dementia or coping with a recent diagnosis, we hope, you know, you'll find us and we'll see you there soon. Take care. Bye, Maria. Bye, Laurie. Thank you. I love you. Love you. Hot. <laughs>